The first thing you want to do is, of course, unplug the power. Then we can open this bay, this unit, and we'll remove the cartridge. You don't need a cartridge. Right after that, you can just close this unit and we'll remove the paper tray. I'm not going to need this unit either. The tools that we're going to require are a regular Phillips screwdriver, needle nose pliers, and a small flathead. These are the basic tools that we're going to need. Open the lid. Right here on the sides, you can pry it with a small screwdriver to the sides. Or, to give you a better view, right here, you can pry it like that to the side. Or you can just really use your fingers if need be. Now, when priming it, you have to be careful the unit on the back. It's very sensitive, and you don't want to break it. Remember, everything on this printer is basically plastic. So be very careful when removing this unit on the back. This panel. Now this unit is a little bit easier than, than, than the other side of the printer. On this side you're going to find two notches. You can just pry it. That reveals the other side of the printer. You have the back end. That one we also need to remove it as well. And this one is really easy. These two here, two on the bottom. And on the sides also you're going to find some screws. That's mostly the ones in the corner. Always move for the corners. Let's remove the screws. Now, again, be careful when removing this back plate, because just, just as the rest of them, it's plastic as well. Make it easier, just open it. These green notches over here. Just use your flat head. Bring them down. By bringing down the screen notches, it's easier to release the unit. So to remove it, be very gentle on removing it. There's a little part over here that you're going to have to pry. That's why we use a little flathead. So once you pry the bottom from the bottom tray, from the black tray, you can just move it back, back over. Now this tray over here, you can lower it down, and since it's not, you, eh, you're not going to need it, you can uh, actually take it out. Now those screws, you can take that one out, however, this one you can just leave it loose. You don't need to take it out completely. But as you as I'm going to show you now, let me see if I can give you a better view. This side over here, the control, the power, the stop button, that's really attached. As you can see, there's a wire right here. And in order to remove the plate, again, we use our little flathead screwdriver, and you can easily pry it open. You can open the top. Slide it back and now you can remove the back cover. First I'm going to remove this unit.
he has a lot of screws. He has about seven screws on the sides and the middle. Those have to come out. This plate. Now the printer, this card where it holds the uh, peripherals and the USB connection, uh, you don't have to remove it completely. All you have to do is just remove this wire and be very gentle when doing so. And then you can flip the card. It's out of the way. Now be very careful with the fan because the fan has a blade protector, this little clip over here. Make sure you don't lose it and be careful when taking it out. That's our fan. Now we need to get to the gear heads. We have about five, four screws for the gear head itself. Be careful when opening it. In order to do that, we also have to prep it very careful. Be very gentle, right here on the sides. This is where you prep it. You can use your screwdriver. Now this is going to expose almost the fuser. We're almost getting there. With your needle nose pliers, unplug the connections to the board. And don't worry about the, uh, the position. All of them are color coded, so it's very easy for you to get back to it. Now on the side you're going to find these plastics. They're holding the cabling together and uh, protecting the cabling as, as well. You can just slide it to the side. Make sure to apply some pressure over here and slide it to the side. There we go. Do the same thing for the other. We'll apply some pressure, slide it to the side, and then it comes out. Now the fuser has plen plenty of screws all over. You're going to find a screw over here, another there and also on the top for support. We have a cable protector unit, which is another plastic. You can actually take it out, you can yank it out. Let me show you. Be very careful when doing so as well. This actually was holding the wires. This little unit here. Now we're ready to get to the fuser. Let's get your flathead screwdriver and let's remove this gear. Be very careful when doing so. Again, everything about the sprinter is about pressure. How much pressure you put on the, on the, uh, on the parts to remove it. You, the gear comes out very easy. This side also as well, you're going to encounter screws which you're going to have to remove in order to get to the fuser. It's one here. Now this little, let me turn it around for you. It's a little part over here on the top, this little bar. You can easily remove it at this point. Be very careful on the side. You want to take it out at an angle. And the power unit is located right at this corner. Uh, I wish it could give you a better angle, but uh, you can use your needle nose and you can actually yank it out. Uh, one more for the unit over here. That's good. Let's get this puppy out. Now, right now, the whole fuser assembly it has been removed. 
you don't, like I say, you don't need to remove the whole fuser out. All you need to do is just remove any paper, any paper jam on this tray to clean this unit while, it, while, it's, while, while you're taking the paper jam. Uh, how to clean it? You can use an air duster.